Welcome. Thank you for joining our webinar, How Business Finds the Power to Succeed. I'm Sarah Larson with Invest Buffalo Niagara, the Buffalo Niagara Region's Economic Development Organization. I've hosted a number of webinars that you can find on our YouTube channel on various topics in economic development worth diving deeper into with our various partners around the region. And I'm very happy to bring you today's topic. Before we get started, I see that we do have a special guest in attendance. John Como is the chair of NIPA, the expert organization joining us for today's presentation. He is currently and is an advisor for an investor in several early stage businesses based in Western New York. I'd like to ask a fellow Western New Yorker and longtime great ambassador of the region, John Como, to take a couple minutes and kick us off with a little bit about the region, Invest Buffalo Niagara, NIPA, and how economic development partners like these are working to help continue the economic renaissance in Western New York. John, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Sarah. I uh, appreciate the kind words and kind introduction and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, certainly delighted to have uh, this opportunity to welcome you uh, to the webinar featuring the Power Authority's largest and most wide-reaching economic development program, Recharge New York. As uh, Sarah mentioned, I've been honored to uh, chair the Power Authority. I'm now in my ninth year. And uh, having lived and worked in Buffalo for my entire career, it always makes me that much more proud to see the resources of the authority made available to businesses across Western New York through partnerships such as this with Invest Buffalo Niagara. A couple minutes on NIPA, we've uh, been fully invested in the growth and development of the Buffalo Niagara region for many, many, many years. And while our Niagara Power Project in Lewiston is uh, our most visible asset, uh, be assured the extent of our involvement in supporting many aspects of the economic rebirth of Western New York over the last 10 years in particular, our participation is otherwise very significant and far-reaching. As to Recharge New York, not only is it our largest uh, program, but it's just one of the economic development initiatives and support services that we offer to support dozens of businesses and enterprises across Western New York whether that be hydropower and funding incentives, energy efficiency improvements, electric uh, vehicle charging infrastructure, clean energy resources, or many others, further demonstration of the extent and level of commitment we make to the region and the economic vitality uh, thereof. And that's why our partnership with Invest Buffalo Niagara is so important. It creates uh, real advantages to showcase why the Buffalo Niagara region is an ideal place for businesses to invest and grow. We have a great yet low cost quality of life, uh, and incredibly educated and highly skilled workforce, very affordable real estate, and of course, lower cost clean hydropower from NIPA, which are just some of the reasons that make Western New York ideal for expansion, relocation, or otherwise uh, robust growth and development. And with Invest Buffalo Niagara, be assured you have an outstanding concierge and advisor, a five-star advisor, to help you evaluate the myriad of programs, incentives, and resources available to support your growth and development needs. Be assured that when you join with Invest Buffalo Niagara and NIPA, that we're going to work with you hand-in-hand -hand to provide access to a full portfolio of incentives and resources that are tailored specifically to your business. So thank you very much again for joining us today. We look forward to working with you in the weeks and months to come. And here's to more great partnerships in 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you for your passion for the region. and Thank you for the kind words, much appreciated. Without further ado, I'm gonna share our presenters today. From our NBN offices is Vice President of Business Development, Kim Grant. Kim has a strong background in business development particularly in advanced manufacturing and the medical device and biotechnology industries. She has a strength in cultivating partnerships with the academic space while attracting companies to the region by identifying funding sources. We are thrilled to welcome our guest presenter today, Alana Appenzeller with the New York Power Authority. 
Alana and her team have helped numerous Western New York businesses cut long-term energy costs, and Alana is going to explain how you might be eligible to do so too. Also joining us, we're pleased to have Bob Confer with us today. He is president of Confer Plastics, located here in Western New York. Confer Plastics is one of the leading large part low molders in the world with over 45 years of experience in the industry and holding numerous developed patents through the years. Confer Plastics is a recipient of the Recharge New York incentive and Bob is with us today to share his success story. So now that you know a little bit about us, I'd like to actually allow our presenters to understand who our audience is today. I'm gonna to do a couple polls in order to do that. So the first one on your screen is, is your organization located within the eight counties of Western New York, outside of Western New York, but still in the New York State, or is it outside of New York State? So about 80% of our audience today is within the eight counties of Western New York, which is great. Great to have this local audience for Alana to speak specifically to. Others are within New York State, and then we still do have some attendees from outside of New York State, which will be great to hear from Kim as well. Um, so we have a little something for everybody on the call today. One more poll. I'd like to understand what industries you may be representing today. And so if you can click whether you might be in the manufacturing, agribusiness, food processing industry, if you are within advanced business services, maybe life sciences, if you're a fellow economic developer, or if you're not on our list today, click other, that'll give us a sense too. Great, so we're kind of split by thirds it looks like here. A third of our audience is within the manufacturing agribusiness. Others are those on learning more about the recharge incentive so that they can communicate it to businesses around the region. And then we have another third outside of that audience. So maybe that's something we'll be able to follow up in the Q&A or even after on to learn more about. So now that we better understand who we are and who our audience is, Kim, I'm gonna pass this along to you to get started with our presentation today. So just a, a brief introduction about Invest Buffalo Niagara. We are our region's economic development agency. We cover the eight Western counties. If you look at the map, you'll see how close we are to such a significant part of, of the country. Um, although we all know it, for those of us on the call, about our work, live, and play here in the region, um, it's really a special place when you think of the proximity to the rest of the, the country and the uh, huge amounts of people that we are near and the opportunity that provides, especially given the pandemic, where we see people fleeing the urban centers and onshoring and reshoring. Uh, their product and their supply chain. We have a huge opportunity right now. Invest Buffalo Niagara is on course to have their best year of attracting businesses and creating new jobs in our region since 2015. We've got a huge uh, opportunity in front of us. The inquiries that we've gotten are any indication. Um, we're on course to do just that. So to be sure, we recognize that our assets in our region are in advanced business services. So think about the back office operations of Geico and the banks and the insurance companies. Advanced manufacturing, we have a long history and an extraordinary work ethic in advanced manufacturing, whether it's tires or uh, plastics, agribusiness, you just can't have a bunch of cows in the middle of New York City. Uh, so we see our yogurt factories and uh, soon to be a spice factory. Um, a nutrient rich company is looking at our area. So lots going on in the agribusiness space and life sciences. Um, I had the pleasure of being at the University of Buffalo for several years and on the medical campus for almost 20 years. It's such a special place and has such extraordinary growth opportunity. We've seen it happen already and we're working on a plan to, to grow our biotech cluster even bigger. And logistics, with our proximity to Canada, um, it's a huge growing entity for us. If you look at all of the warehousing and the um, access with all of our great roads, 
Um, logistics is a huge part of the success of our region. And so why Buffalo Niagara? I always tell people I'm a, I'm a business girl. I, it's, it's about business. So, so why are you on this call today? You know, we have low cost, reliable hydropower. We have low cost real estate. We have low cost wages, and, but a skilled workforce ready and a low cost of living. And, and the reality is that other parts of the country that are also uh, booming economically don't have uh, the trifecta that we do in all of those areas. So for those of you that are here, you're experiencing it firsthand. For those of you that are outside the region, um, self-select, raise your hand, give me a call, and I'd be glad to share some of the success stories of the companies that we've brought to this region and that are expanding in this region for all of the reasons that I mentioned. I am thrilled to see so many of our industrial development agency partners on the call today um, to learn about this because without their assistance and Empire State Development and our municipal partners, we can't get the word out um, about the incentives that are available um, and tell the story because honestly um, if you're sitting in your office or in our home offices as we have been these past few months you just don't know unless you're in the industry all of the resources that are available to help your business it costs you absolutely nothing to ask the question so i encourage you all to think about innovation, think about expansion, think about research and development, um, and think about um, recharge and what you could do with your business with a little bit additional resources. With that, I am gonna turn it over to Alana. She's the real star here, and she's gonna tell you about recharge. Thank you so much, Kim, and thank you everyone for being here today. I can't tell you how happy I am to be here. Um, my name is Alana Appenzeller and I work on the economic development team at the New York Power Authority. I have been with NYPA for about 12 years and I've spent most of that time working with businesses all across New York State. Uh, so to start, I'm gonna give you a brief overview of the Power Authority. Our wonderful chairman did a great job um, with, with an overview of all of the things that we do, especially in Western New York. Um, I'll then discuss the specifics of the Recharge New York program, uh, benefits, eligibility, everything you'll need to know about the program. Um, I'll touch on the application a bit, and then I would like to introduce you to our team at NYPA that works on economic development. So NYPA is the largest state-owned electric utility in the United States. Our history goes back to 1931 when FDR signed the Power Authority Act, and we first began producing power in 1958. Our two largest facilities are our hydropower plant, the uh, St. Lawrence FDR Power Project, and our pride and joy, the Robert Moses Niagara Power Project. Um, that came online in 1961, and at the time, the Niagara Project was actually the largest uh, hydropower facility in the Western world. Um, so today, we have about 1,900 employees across all of our facilities. Uh, as you can see here on that map, we have 17 operating facilities uh, across the state and three administrative offices. Um, as, as the chairman mentioned, we do have an office in downtown Buffalo, um, as well as our Niagara Power Project. And our, um, my boss, actually our director of economic development works out of that Western New York uh, office in Buffalo. So we do have a large presence in the area. Uh, overall, we produce about 20% of the state's total electric load. Um, we also operate about a quarter of the state's high voltage transmission system. 80% of that power is generated at those hydropower facilities that I mentioned at Niagara and St. Lawrence. Um, and a big part of what we do is our economic development programs. We are a leader in using this electric hydropower uh, for the benefit of the state. So overall, we have about 400,000 jobs tied to those economic development programs I mentioned, and we've invested millions and millions of dollars into clean energy projects. So one of these businesses that have benefited from our hydropower and our economic development programs is Confer Plastics in North Tonawanda. You'll see we have Bob Confer here today. Um, and by his testimony you see here, what drew Confer to recharge was long-term cost certainty and cost savings. These are savings that Confer was able to reinvest back into their operations and purchase new machinery. 
We are so happy to have Bob Confer here today so he can tell you firsthand uh, how he has turned his challenges into opportunities over the past year and how NYPA has played a small role in helping him remain competitive in the global marketplace. So Bob, we are so happy to have you here. Thank you for having me on board. Glad to uh, spread the word about NYPA and everything good that it does for the community and everything it does for Confer Plastics. And, just to lay down what we do for those watching the webinar, uh, I like to say that we deal in fun at Confer Plastics. 90% of what we manufacture gets people in the water or on the water. So we're making Confer branded ladders and steps to get people inside swimming pools. We're making cabinetry that goes on the outside of hot tubs. Those are utilized by about 14 different OEMs in the US and Canada to outfit their spas with that. And then we also make as a custom job, kayaks. And you see a kayak, in that picture right there being manufactured. We've got an assembly crew working on that. And it's all been uh, good business for us. And it, it's good that we see the positive outcome of getting people outside and having fun. It's been our call for decades, but it's taken on special significance over the past year because we've got a virus that's really compelling people to be away from others, but at the same time, they've got to be there with family. They've got to do something outside. They've got to break the monotony of being indoors and being sequestered. So having access to that swimming pool and that hot tub and that kayak to do things outside, that makes us feel good about what we're doing. So when we do all this, we're facing a lot of competition. We've got the domestic competition, and then we've got pretty significant competition coming from overseas where China is usually a daily threat to us from ripoff products to copycat products, things like that. So it comes down to the issue, we have to manage costs in order to compete globally. And when it comes to that, NIPA has been a godsend to us. When you look at what we use in terms of electricity, we're using anywhere on a peak day about three megawatts, it's not more, sometimes up to four megawatts. It's a lot of electricity to melt the plastic, extrude the plastic, and then finish it into the goods that we have. And we've got a very large power bill because of that. In a typical year, we might be looking at anywhere from 800,000 up to a million dollars. So savings are critical to us, any place we can get them. And NIPA fits the bill with that. When you look at what we've done with uh, Recharge in New York and also replacement power, and you combine all of that, you look at the savings and then you look at the certainty. The savings have been pretty significant. Right now, we're looking at savings somewhere between 15 to $20,000 a year. That number is certain to grow. And that's why I like the certainty part of this because when you look at the cost of the hydroelectric power, water always basically costs the same. You're not gonna see extravagant increases where there might be a uh, supply issue with gas, might be a pipeline issue, or you're gonna look at ultimately over time as more and more states get into different aspects of green energy. That's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but I know that looking at the hydro energy that goes into this power bill and goes into Recharge New York, that savings right now, it's in that fifteen dollars to $20,000 range, is actually going to double within the next 10 years. And those are huge savings. Now you combine that with the savings that I have from the replacement power program through NIPA. We're looking at savings probably right now in the tune of fifty dollars to $60,000 a year. And that's significant. So beyond that, there's also the messaging that goes with that. When you look at this energy coming from clean hydroelectric energy, that's a great selling point for me when I know that right off the bat, 25 to 30% of our power, even before going to market and getting that rest of that energy, is coming from one of the most respected and uh, well-known hydro plants in the Northeast, if not in the entire country. That's pretty significant for us, and it's a great selling point as consumers get into this mode of saying, we want to go green. They want to know green. They want to know that I'm using material in-house that can be recycled, that I'm using material in-house that I've recycled myself from in-house scrap. And then it's good for them to know that the energy driving those machines is green. Now getting involved with the program, that was extremely easy. A lot of people, when they look at a program that's run by a government agency, some people might fear bureaucracy. There isn't any bureaucracy involved with us. With this, it's a nice, easy paper chain. When we applied for it, Basically, we made a commitment to X number of jobs. We also made a commitment to make an initial investment. And then there was the recurring investment. So when you get into this program, don't think that your initial cash outlay will set the foundation of what NIPA would expect you to put out there every single year. When they looked at the trends that we have in terms of capital investment, we committed to recurring capital investments every year of $200,000. 
it wasn't pegged to the machine that we invested in, which was three and a half to four million dollars, which caused this whole investment to take place and for us to pursue Recharge New York. Luckily, they look at your recurring trends in annual investment. So that way it's manageable for you because you don't want to have that one gigantic sticker item be the thing that causes you to lose that power. So this ensures that you keep that power in possession. And when we did the uh, documentation on that, it was very easy. Individual named Dave Thompson, who works there at NIPA, guided me through the process and he manages that process with me on an annual basis, just making sure that we're doing well, that we're able to uh, meet the demand to see if we have other demands in house. And also for any one of you, you're gonna have to do an annual report indicating that you've met the job standards, you've met the investments, and it's some easy record keeping that typically we have done in less than an hour. So it's not like it's gonna be troublesome. Find the jobs data, you find the investment data. Those of you who use a lot of power should know, specifically I would say a manufacturer of our size, nine out of 10 businesses aren't gonna to have to focus on this, is when you look at the market basket of energy that comes through this program, it's gonna be half hydro and it's gonna be half market power. You can decide if you have huge buying power to not pursue the market side of that, which is what we decided to do because we can buy in volume when it comes to electricity and we can get into long-term contracts that allow us to have that set rate for years. Most businesses don't have that buying power. So you need the strength of NIPA behind you to utilize their power to buy the market power that covers that other 50% because they can buy that power in volume and give you significant savings on that end as well. So there's a lot to come from that. And that's just part of something in that registration process that you'll have to analyze yourself. But I would say nine out of 10 businesses are going to have to put their trust in NIPA and let them get the best rates for you. Thank you, Bob. How do I follow that? <laughs> um, we really appreciate your kind words about NIPA. And you know, just so you know, it's a pleasure working with you. And to your point, um, you do work that makes you feel good and hearing, you know, you talk about Recharge New York is what makes my team and all the people that work with you here at NYPA feel really good. Uh, we want to see businesses like yours doing well and succeeding and growing. So to know that we have a small role in that means so much to us and what makes this program so great. So we can't thank you enough for being here and for uh, kind of laying the foundation about the Recharge New York program. Um, so NYPA is awarding allocations of hydropower, low cost hydropower to eligible businesses and nonprofits across the state. So the easiest way to describe it is that you're getting a portion of your electric supply served by NYPA at NYPA's Recharge New York rates. Um, Bob mentioned these allocations are actually a blend of low cost renewable hydropower from our facilities um, and market power that NYPA is uh, purchasing in the wholesale market. It is a direct sale arrangement with NYPA. So you are entering into a contract with NYPA. You're getting billed directly by NYPA. Everything is straight through us, um, but we still rely on the, the electric utilities around the state um, to, to help deliver that power. So you would still be getting, in essence, your bill from your local utility, NYSEG, RGE, National Grid, and you would also get a bill from NYPA for the piece that we're giving you. Uh, there, it is a competitive application process. Um, we rely on legislative criteria to score these applications. Um, so we're basically looking for things like you can commit to retain or create jobs, uh, invest in your facility, um, and in exchange for these commitments to the state, you're essentially getting this benefit from NYPA. So the, the beauty of this program is that it's not only for businesses that are going through a major expansion um, or that are locating to the state. While it can be used for business attraction, it can be used to incentivize expansions, it is open to what we call retention. So if you're a manufacturer, uh, you, you operate a warehouse that has refrigeration, you're a data center, um, any, uh, a hospital, anything like that where you have a high electric load, um, you can apply just for your current operations. So, so we're, you know, we're not looking for you to purchase millions of dollars worth of machinery if you're planning uh, over the next five years to get new carpeting or, you know, replace your HVAC system or getting new machineries or even, 
you know, getting computer hardware, anything that's showing us that you're upkeeping your facilities and you're looking to stay here and keep your employees here, that is what we're looking for uh, for a retention customer. So uh, you don't necessarily have to do some, some massive expansion or even an energy related project. So let's get into eligibility. Large and small businesses are eligible to apply for this program. Manufacturers make up a very large portion of the program. Uh, we do have warehouses, uh, especially ones with refrigeration spaces, um, agricultural businesses, things of that nature, all, uh, all participating in the program. Um, I know we have the large and small business numbers up there. Um, they may not mean much to you without having your electric bills in front of you, but uh, we, can, we can definitely help you out, see which category you fall into. Um, as long as you're not uh, a storefront, unfortunately, restaurants, um, hotels, gaming, um, entertainment related establishments, um, or if you're a government entity, you would not be eligible to apply for this program. Um, but you are always welcome to reach out to us. We do have other opportunities to work with NYPA and my, me and my team would be more than happy to, to walk through it with you and see. Um, what opportunities are there with NIPA or with any other agencies that we know of. So uh, for Recharge New York, you can apply through the consolidated funding application. What that is, it's basically a portal for all, and it streamlines um, all sorts of government, uh, government New York State programs that you can apply to. So Recharge New York is one of them. Um, you may have, heard, may have heard of the Excelsior program, um, things along that nature. You can go in and you can apply for multiple programs all at once through through this portal. And we have some handouts at the end of the presentation um, from NYPA, and you can have the link uh, to the, the CFA on there. And there's also gonna be, there's also gonna be some um, helpful tips. So if you did wanna go into the application and look around, uh, it's basically a list of, of information you should have available before you start this application. Uh, uh, for NYPA, uh, we do have a rolling deadline, so you can apply at any any point throughout the year. Uh, just one thing to be aware of is not all the programs have a rolling deadline, so just be aware of that if you're if you're going into and you're looking to apply for for something besides the recharge program. <clears throat> um, if you've if you've applied in the past, there is a cloning feature available, so you could actually go in and copy everything you've had in a previous application into a new application, which is a really, I can't even tell you how great this feature is because it'll save you so much time filling out your name and your address and, and things, things of that nature. Um, and the one thing I can't stress enough about really anything in this presentation, but specifically about the application is we're here to help. My, the economic development team at NYPA, this is what we do. We will sit with you, we will look at your bills, we will give you an idea of what your potential award could be, what your potential savings could be in the program. We will help you determine if it's a good fit for you, and we will walk you through this application question by question if need be. So please, if you are thinking of applying, if you have any questions, or if you may have started an application already and you're starting to go through it, we are 100% here for you and we want to help. So please don't be shy. Um, so as far as timing goes, we do have a tentative schedule here. Um, our team needs to review all of these applications and they also go to the Regional Economic Development Councils for scoring. So it does require us a little bit of time uh, to review the application and get those scores. All, uh, all recommendations for applications have to go to NYPA's Board of Trustees for approval. So the schedule of the approvals really depends on the board schedule. Uh, the board is meeting this month to approve our next round of awards. Um, and then after that, the next uh, time we would be approving them is most likely July. So if you are interested in applying, the date to keep in mind is June 4th. That is our, our deadline right now. It may change a bit, so you're gonna have all of our contact information. So I encourage you to reach out um, if you're thinking of applying and, and we'll be in touch and make sure that you have everything you need and you're all set for your application. Just because the state is, is a bit far away, doesn't I don't want that to stop you from applying um, whenever you can. Um, it does not enter into you. It does not eat away at your contract term, the seven year term and any investments you make between your application date and the time you start your your award uh, will still count towards your capital commitment. So there's really no harm in applying 
as soon as as soon as you're able to. And again, it gives us plenty of time to make sure your application is the best it could be. Um, so this is one more testimonial we have here. This is from Magellan Aerospace. In they have facilities actually in Queens and Long Island. They are another long-term participant in the program, and their savings have helped them reinvest in their facilities, much like it did for Comfort Plastics on the total opposite <laughs> uh, corner of the state. Um, so, you know, aerospace in particular, a lot of these defense contractors have been having a pretty rough year, I would say. So, Recharge New York has definitely been really helpful to them, controlling their costs and and remaining viable um, over the past past year. And, since they've been in the program. So we're happy to, to help these, these businesses in any way we can. The program is looking to help businesses control energy costs in the long term. And uh, you know, Bob said it, said some very kind words, and, and I'll echo them. What really is special about NIFA is that there is a team here to help you. Um, as I mentioned, my team will help you understand the program, understand the benefits of the program. Uh, go through the application, and once you are awarded, assuming that you apply and, and get an award, um, you actually have an account representative, as Bob mentioned, because it's Dave Thompson. They're there to help you every step of the way. So once you, once you get that award, you're not being sent to a hotline. If you have a question about your bill, there's an actual person there to help you every step of the way. So with that being said, I wanted to introduce you to the economic development team at NIPA. So our role is uh, to spread the word about the program and assist businesses in understanding if they're eligible, if it's a good fit, and what the benefits could be. Uh, we also work really closely, I think I may have mentioned, with Empire State Development, local um, industrial development agencies, obviously our partners like Invest Buffalo and Niagara, they all help us get this program out there and for businesses that, that really need it. Here you'll see Rich Smith is our Director of Economic Development. He oversees economic development across the state and he's the lead for Western New York and the Finger Lakes. I think I may have mentioned now he is a, he is a local, he works um, out of our Buffalo office. Um, so if you do reach out to us, it'll likely be him or myself that you'll be getting in touch with. I uh, manage economic development for New York City and Long Island, um, and I'm also Rich's backup in Western New York. And we've been seeing a lot of activity in the area, so my role has been increasingly prominent there. So um, I'm very excited about it, and hopefully we'll be chatting with a lot of you very soon. We have Patricia Wilson in the North Country, so think Eastern New York uh, from the Capital Region up to the Canadian border. And we have Amber Sisson, who basically oversees any area that I didn't mention, uh, Southern Tier, Central New York, Mohawk Valley, middle of, middle of the state, I'll say. Um, our next slide will show you how you can get in touch with us. We have our website there, that email poweringbusiness at nipa.gov. That goes to all four members of our team. And like I said, it'll likely be Rich or myself getting back to you. Um, we have the link for the consolidated funding application, and that is my direct number. So if you have any questions, please feel free. Obviously, I like to talk a lot, so, so uh, please don't be shy and reach out. So that is all I have. So I guess we'll kick it back to Kim. So as I mentioned, we're all about doing business. We want to help you grow your business. We want to help you manage your costs. And so um, I, I asked the question at the beginning of the webinar, if you had a chance to be a part of the recharge program, what would you do for your business? What would you do with that savings? Click on whether or not you're going to hire more people, uh, perhaps deploy an e-commerce strategy, invest in some of those R&D initiatives that could create a new product or service on your part, uh, grow your product offering, I hope this is getting the, the uh, juices flowing um, and that all of you are gonna make our phones ring um, so that we can explore some of those opportunities. You know, I'm gonna do a little bit of a plug for Invest Buffalo Niagara. I literally had no idea the breadth of the things that Invest Buffalo Niagara does in our region to engage companies, attract companies to our region, to make those investments and generate those new jobs. And uh, it's all right there on our website, free of charge. 
Um, we have newsletters. If there's a particular uh, industry sector that you're particularly interested in, you can register for those. We have blogs that are topical about ways that other businesses and best practices and things that they're doing to drive uh, their industry forward. We have the Bell Ringer podcast. Uh, I have a couple of favorites. One is My City Smells Like Cheerios. If you haven't listened to that one, Nick from Odoo. Um, he's another one. Amazing ambassadors for our region that are talking about why it's so special to have their businesses here and the things that they've taken advantage of in our region um, that are helping them be successful. If you give me a call, uh, my team and I will help you identify ways to find the, the talent that you're going to need to do the work. Uh, we have professional services, whether it be placement agencies, utilities, lawyers, accountants, insurance people, banks. We have all those contacts and they're willing and ready to have those discussions with you and help you identify the ways to grow your business. So our contact information is here, um, but I'd like to turn it back over to Sarah. Okay, so let me go and get us started on our Q&A. Alana, the first one looks like it's for you. And if I already received Recharge New York, the power incentive, can I apply for more? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, as I mentioned, the awards are based on uh, the jobs and investments. So if you, since the time that you originally applied, if your electric load has increased, if you are able to commit to additional employment, and if you can commit to additional capital investment, you can absolutely apply for more recharge New York power. So a continuation on that then, is every recharge award a seven-year contract? Yes, every recharge award is a seven-year contract. Um, and just to give you a little bit more information about the awards themselves, typically uh, for retention, you can receive up to 50% of your average electric usage, um, subject to the scoring model, of course, but we can award up to 50% of your average electric demand over the past 12 months um, as your award. And if you're um, a new business to New York, or if you're looking to expand, that number actually increases up to 70%. So we can apply, uh, you can get a, a really decent amount of your electric load supplied by NIPA. What, it, what happens if a customer can't meet the job or capital investment commitment in that contract? If you can't meet those commitments, we do work with you. Um, we, as I mentioned, every uh, business has an account rep that they work with. So they'll work with you. They'll get an understanding of what, what was the reason for the shortfall. Um, you know, we're realistic here. You know, not every project that is planned goes forward. Um, things change, look at COVID. So we, you know, we definitely try to understand what the reason was for the shortfall and the commitments. Um, if the reason is not a great one, the worst that can happen is we just take back a portion of your allocation. So we're, there are no penalties, there are no fees. We don't back bill you for anything like that. You know, the, the whole point of this program is to help you. So if a business can't meet their commitments, you know, our intention is not to, to hurt them. So um, we do actually build into the contract a 90% threshold. So if you commit to 100 employees, you only um, get to 90 for the year, you're actually considered compliant. So we do build in that wiggle room for you. Okay. And then this next one, Alana, I think I know the answer to. So if they're interested in understanding the participation currently in recharge within Western New York. And I think that number is around 90-ish plus. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I believe it was around 90 uh, businesses that are currently participating in Western New York. Bob, you mentioned increasing a workforce. You've increased about 50 through this incentive. What Buffalo Niagara resources have you used to do so? And what's your impression of the workforce in Buffalo Niagara? I would say we have an excellent workforce and it's uh, quite varied, quite diverse. One thing that should not be overlooked here in Western New York is the access to the refugee and immigrant population. And that would hold true for any business. I don't matter if someone's in hospitality, retail, farming, manufacturing, that workforce is there and it's readily available and uh, it's a learned workforce too. 
So some people might think that, okay, they might be coming from refugee camps in third world countries, but you know what? These people have excellent work ethics. They went through schooling. Well, they're in Myanmar as an example, and uh, we have a very good workforce that understands the technical implications of what we do and what that means to the consumers. Beyond just the resource of tapping into immigrants and refugees, there's the general American workforce of those who are in their second, third, fourth generations of being Americans. We have a very good workforce in that regard in the fact that our region understands blue collar work. We understand how to do things with our hands and our minds to make products, to farm products, to process products. You can't find that in other regions throughout the country. It's difficult to find people who are active in blue collar or just one or two generations removed from it. So that means we have the intellectual and the physical infrastructure that's necessary to pursue that. And we've had a lot of good outlets of making those individuals better. One would be apprenticeship programs that we run on site at the plant. We uh, invest a lot of time into making sure that people can be the best they can and they can learn the skills of the trade of the plant. But we also rely on a lot of the intellectual resources that are out there in Western New York, whether it's the high school and the vocational trades, very strong in Orleans and Niagara Boses, but also the adult vocational trades. Orleans Niagara Boses has a program for adults and you also have programs at GCC, NCCC, ECC. So all those community colleges are doing the things they can to invest in the workforce and create it that's necessary for manufacturing, agribusiness and things like that. And then also you cannot overlook the university programs we have here, whether it's SUNY system, we've got world-class university in UB, and we have numerous private colleges throughout the region and universities such as Alfred University. So another one for Bob, you know, we've talked a lot about the low cost of doing business in Western New York and you've received the recharge New York incentive. What other benefits do you think uh, experience doing business in Western New York? There's an incredible number of them. And uh, first and foremost, since we're talking about electricity and, and night and things like that, let's talk about the reliability of power. There's one thing that manufacturers or any business hates, and that's downtime. When you look at the inability to trust infrastructure in certain regions because of acts of mother nature, when you lose your electrical grid for an extended period of time, that's a nightmare, especially when it comes to manufacturing, because downtime is lost time that you can never get back. But when you look at what happens in Western New York, the worst thing that can happen in Western New York is snow or ice. And we've been able to weather that in multiple ways. You look at the investments that say a national grid is made in terms of the lines crews that can get out there immediately, fix the lines and make sure they're up to snuff in the event of an ice storm. And then you've got the investments that have been undertaken by NIPA to make sure that you have hydroelectric power. For those not familiar with the region out there on Lake Erie, there's something called the ice boom that's put in there by the New York Power Authority. That's there to protect the ice flows, to make sure that you don't have when you have the spring thaw like you do right now, you don't have icebergs coming out of Lake Erie, crashing down the Niagara River and then demolishing the water intakes at the Niagara Power Project. That ice boom ensures that it melts at a nice steady pace and you get little tiny icebergs, half the size of a car going down the river instead of those twice the size of a car because you don't want a natural disaster happening. So because of all that, we don't experience downtime because of loss of electricity. So having that reliable infrastructure is something that I love. So that goes into the next portion, which is another form of infrastructure, which would be the roadways. It's really neat to be here in New York State and have an infrastructure that's the interstate system, the multiples, whether it's the I-90, the 190, the 290. You have all those different ways to get goods into you, to get goods out, and then also get your coworkers and customers to come to your factory, to your business, to see things, to do things, to make things. And then from there, you have access to the Canadian markets. You have that infrastructure that takes us across these multiple bridges that can get us into the golden horseshoe. And that's a really big business for us and other Western New York businesses because you have that immediate access to one of the richest portions in the whole world, the golden horseshoe, going from the border all the way up to Toronto. And when you look at the economic impact of that, and we look at the benefit that gives us, that's pretty significant. So those are some of the selling points. And one thing that you should look at beyond all of that is we want our homes to thrive too. So the quality of life is significant around here. That's a major selling point. If you're looking to bring your business to Western New York, you can't overlook the, everything that we have access to from border to border in New York. There's a lot of good things that happen there. 
whether you're into fishing, skiing, going out on the wine trails, everything that's out there, there's so much out there that you can do. Kim, I'm gonna have you wrap it up with this last question. If anyone's interested in expansion mode, besides Recharge uh, New York or looking at other incentives or just going through uh, exploring the expansion process, at what point would they engage with you? There is no wrong time to engage with us. Um, wherever you are in that process and that evaluation, um, give us a call, uh, send us an email. Uh, we are glad to have those conversations all day long. Um, and it's constantly changing with the new administration. We're seeing more economic development programs coming down the pike. So what's available today may be different in another couple of months as things uh, sort themselves out. Um, it's a dynamic time in Western New York, and I hope everybody can take advantage of the prosperity that's going on here. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I really appreciate our presenters joining us today, Kim, Alana, Bob for presenting and for our special guest, John Holmo. Uh, thank you so much for speaking as well on our behalf.